Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. It is episode one of season five. We're getting right. Yes, I did write that, <laughs> write that down, right? It's episode one of season five. We're getting ready to start something new. We're going to play Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. And I'll explain some of the extra text up there real quick. Uh, just uh, kind of kind of some general housekeeping at the beginning. Um, games Revisit is my own internal name for my Let's Play series of classic games. It's games that either I enjoyed in my youth and, and you know, or, or that came out around that time. Um, or games that I never had a chance to play, like this one and the one that preceded it. And so it, it's just a, a, a moderately paced look back at uh, some of the games of yesteryear. So it's not the flashiest, it's not the highest res, it's not the greatest graphics, but it is a it is a good fun look, and I I hope it triggers nostalgia if you remember playing these games. I I hope it triggers interest if you never played them or weren't aware of them, and I, I hope it entertains you as we go through because uh, I, I'm going to try to get as, as good a feel for the whole of the game as I can. That, that's why I usually phrase it as a moderately paced playthrough because we're not speedrunning. If you're looking for the uh, finish the game in two hours and 45 minutes flat, that is a different channel. And I wish you the best of luck because I, I know there are people who do that and they do it well. But uh, I am not one of them. That, that's just not my bag. Um, and if you're expecting me to go through each and every crevice, there may be a couple of sections that I kind of skip for time, like some of the side quests and side games. And uh, For example, Pazak. I am not playing every Pazak player. As a matter of fact, I probably won't play unless the game forces me to, because I suck at games of chance. If you rely more on your good fortune than you do your skill, uh, not 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 my thing. So you know, I'll, I'll probably play a hand to show you that the mini game is there. But nah. Um, matter of fact, the only reason why I did the swoop bike races in Knights of the Republic one was twofold. The first being it. It was a required story element for part of the game. In order to get the thing you needed to do the thing for the quest, go go back and watch uh, Season 1. The, <laughs> here, here we are moving into some uh, other related content. But yeah, we did Knights of the Republic, the first one, as part of Season 1. And playing the swoop bike racing was, was a, a required quest, so we had to do it. And I kept doing it because the money was good. I did it all for the credits. The credits. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, sorry. Okay. There'll, there'll be a little bit of that scattered here and there if you're new to my streams. Um, being the other thing, I live stream the recording of the next six episodes. So there's two different ways you can watch this, two different ways you can follow along. Uh, some people choose one, some choose the other, and some kind of mix the two depending on what time allows. Uh, right now, at the time of recording, I'm doing this on Fridays at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern. If you're watching this later on YouTube, there'll be a link to the Twitch channel in the description below. So head on over to Twitch, follow if you aren't already. Even if you don't plan on primarily watching, that way if you happen to be there and I happen to be on. Because I do more than just this. So follow along, you'll know when I go live, and uh, you'll have a chance to watch and see. Uh, the nice thing about being live is you'll actually be able to post comments and I'll be able to reply to them in time. Also, I, I take little breaks periodically where the episode breaks would be. And so that that's just kind of a little, little chat without the game scattered here and there throughout that. And that's a benefit of watching live. Um, on the flip side, what I'm going to do is after the live stream, I'm going to chop this video up into six ish episodes of hopefully 20, more likely 30. My, uh, my skill at keeping things down to time is uh, a 
let, let, let's say let's say my track record is not the best. Matter of fact, I even forgot to start the stopwatch that lets me know uh, how how long I've got per episode. So uh, yeah, we'll take that into account too. Yeah, I'll just add a couple minutes to whatever I see on there, uh, and that gets chopped up and and posted to YouTube later on. So if if you're not prepared to sit down for a two hour stream. Go follow on YouTube. It'll come out in 20 to 30 minute chunks. A little bit easier to follow. I space them out. So first episode will show up tomorrow. The next episode will show up the day after that and so on and so forth. So you'll get to spread out a little bit more. And even if you plan on watching live all the time, do go over to YouTube. Do subscribe to the channel because following on Twitch and subscribing to the YouTube channel help tell those systems that this is content that people are interested in. So by following and subscribing, it really helps promote the channel. It's a good, easy way to support what's going on. Uh, assuming I've earned your support, of course. Uh, so that, that's that little bit of housekeeping. So as we go through the live stream, you're going to see me stop and switch up and, and change modes just a little bit here and there. That's me leaving little spaces to, uh, to drop in the outro that's going to go on the YouTube version. Uh, which is a little bit different because if you if you look back at the live streams for the previous four seasons, I did the outro as a part of the live stream. So I did live to tape the whole episode start to finish break, the whole episode start to finish break, um, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the outro and just pre-record that and tack it on at the end of every upload. Uh, so hopefully the live stream will feel a little smoother but the episodes will maintain the same quality. That's the goal. We'll see if I can achieve that. Now, all that said and done and out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the game itself. Uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords, the title gets longer, uh, <laughs> came out about a year after Knights of the Old Republic 1. LucasArts approached Obsidian Entertainment and asked them to make the game and it first came out on Xbox in 2004 and the PC version came out in 2005. Um, you'll notice that I have on the title screen up... Oh, I always get it mixed up. Up there, you'll notice that I've got on the title screen uh, that this is the restored content modification. That is because... Oh, I get to fix my camera too. I made that a little too small. I'll fix that later. All right. Um, LucasArts, for whatever reason, really, really pushed to get Knights of the Old Republic 2 out 16, 16 months, 16 weeks. Uh, no, it wasn't 16 weeks. It couldn't have been 16 weeks. So I'm going to say 16 months. I, I, I've read like so many different things trying to prep and get ready for this that it's not even funny. Uh, anyway, long story short, truncated timeline. No changes. Like, the the, rele the go date was the go date, whether it was ready or not. And so, as a result, it shipped with a lot of bugs. It crashed a lot. And there was even a lot of content that was not playable. It was in the game. The dialogues and the characters and the quests were there. It just wasn't in the game. I mean, it was in the game, but it wasn't something you could play because there, there was a bug that stopped it or some, you know, for one reason or another, it just, it wasn't playable. And um, the restored content modification is a mod that a bunch of fans got together and put made, and it fixes something like 500 bugs and glitches. And it unlocks a lot of the content that was locked away so if you've played the game before but you didn't know about that restored content modification uh you're in for a treat because you're going to see some new dialogue options you're going to see some new dialogue some new places some new quests and uh hopefully it will be a a wonderful wonderful thing and uh that's why you see on my screen here star wars knights of the old republic to the sith lords restored content modification just because long titles and longer titles and longer titles
and that is going to be our end goal. Now, there are a few other things that are different. Um, even though it kept the same game engine and kind of touched up the graphics a little bit here and there, uh, a lot of the core gameplay stays the same between Knights of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2 uh, with an asterisk. And we'll go over those asterisks as we reach certain points of the uh, the game setup. So, oh, don't go. I keep losing my stopwatch, too. Uh, I'll have to find a better place to put that later. <laughs> all right. So that is all that introductory stuff out of the way. Let's start rolling a character, and then I'll probably stop episode one so I can fix my camera size and a couple other things like that. Let's uh, hit up that new game option. And you get to choose your class and whether you're playing a male or a female. One of the nice things that they did for Knights of the Old Republic 2 is instead of forcing you to take a, a couple of levels of soldier or scoundrel or you know something like that, um, you start off as a Jedi. So you start off as a Sentinel, a Consular, or a Guardian, and... You're doing nothing but your core Jedi class. The other nice thing is they introduced prestige classes, which does two major things. First, it ups the level cap from up to level 20 in the first one to up to level 30 in this one. So you can do so you'll end up with 30 character levels by the time this is all done. Uh, I should put kind of forgot that I should probably should have mentioned that if you didn't see the first one the Star Wars games the Knights of the Old Republic games uh, use the D&D &D, Dungeons and Dragons D20 type system underpinnings from the tabletop world so you, we're going to use a lot of a lot of those terms here so if you're familiar with them great if not that's a perfect thing to toss up in the chat or ask in the comments on YouTube and I'll either include it in next week's run or or answer it in chat, whatever seems most appropriate. So, long story longer, you've got 30 character levels to play with, and if you hit certain milestones, you can actually start prestiging at level 15. Uh, I did not get a... I did not check to see how many prestige class levels there are. If it's staying true to its D&D roots, it's going to be either 5 or 10, because that's the way that most prestige classes run, uh, with a couple of outliers here and there. But it, it usually runs 5 to 10. So that means, that, realistically speaking, you, you might be able to do a full 20 levels of your main class and 10 levels of prestige. Uh, that would be the math assuming that we have a prestige class and you're going 30 character levels so uh but i didn't actually confirm that before hitting record or actually hitting go live it's recording as we go so that gives us a nice little bonus because here's the thing we're going to start off as a counselor a sentinel or a guardian and then once you pick that, you're pretty much stuck with it for the run of your class until you prestige. So in other words, you start off as a, a Jedi Guardian. They're, they're very melee focused. They, they don't have a whole lot of skill points, and that's good because they don't have a whole lot of skills. And you, you, you get to level 15, and you're like, man, I really, I really kind of wish I had more Jedi powers to play with. I mean, it'd be really nice if I had some more Jedi powers to play with. So when you prestige, you, you prestige into, I forget the exact term, but it's pretty much the uh, prestige consular type deal. And, and un until we get to where the names actually matter, I'll just refer to them as prestige consular and prestige guardian, because that's what they are. That's not the actual terms that are used in game, and I'll, I'll use the correct terms as we get closer to that. So... You, you can actually make some changes as you go, which is nice. Uh, so we have our three our three choices. We've got the Jedi Consular over here. Jedi Consulars are more Force-oriented, less combat-oriented, as they give you in that little blurb at the bottom, so thank Yoda. 
you're going to be throwing out all sorts of fun and interesting powers. You're going to be doing amazing force things. You're going to get tons of force points to work with. Um, but your hit points are going to be low. Low. <laughs> like, an order of magnitude lower. Like, uh, let me, let me... Yeah, I don't... Yeah, it's going to cut off the audio on that. At least the, the stream is going to show the right thing. Let me go grab this guy right here. Oh, and I almost forgot. Because we're playing the Steam version, we get achievements. There's 57 of them. I'm not going to get them all this playthrough. I can't get them all this playthrough. It is literally impossible to get them all this playthrough without cheating. I could cheat and get them all, but that's a whole other thing. All right, so let's go through the classes real quick. Uh, let me move this over here so I'm actually looking at the camera as I read this. All right, so we, you've got your consular. Your consular is going to end up getting uh, two skill points per level, plus whatever your bonus for high intelligence is. You're getting uh, a lower defense bonus. It's two plus two times your level divided by six. Yes, because math. And I told my teacher I wouldn't need it. <laughs> uh, but the nice thing is, is you get eight force per level and only six vitality. So, so your hit points are kind of low. Your force points are really high. And you get more powers than anybody else. You start off with two at first level, and then you get a bonus one every other level after that. So where everybody else is getting one power at level three, as a counselor, you're getting two. So again, if you want to accumulate all the powers and do all sorts of really cool things and have the points to actually do it, then you're going to want to pick the counselor. Just know that your only class skills are going to be Awareness, Persuade, Repair, and Treat Injury. So if you want to do any computer use at all yourself, uh, you're either going to be spending your points at a deficit, and we'll talk about that part a little bit more when we get to that stage of the character creation. Um, and, you know, those skill points that you don't get a lot of, yeah, you're going to be doubling down on how many it takes to do the skills. Uh <laughs> That, that aren't in your class, which is most of them. Uh, something to keep in mind. And then when we get to our Sentinel, th this is actually more likely the route that I'm going to go because the Sentinel is supposed to be the balanced character. It, it's got the a high enough vitality that you'll have some hit points to work with. It's got enough combat prowess that you'll be able to do some combat. You're not going to be a shining star in combat, but you're not going to be slouching either. And same on the four side. So think Obi-Wan. You're, you're going to get your nice, well-rounded, a lot of force powers, but not so much as the consular. Enough force points to fuel those powers that you do get. Uh, but you're not going to be slacking on hit points in combat capability either it's a nice well balanced you're going to get a good reflex you're going to get good fortitude your skill points are going to be a little bit higher so you're going to get three plus your intelligence at each level and you get access to more skills the sentinel has computer use on their skill list they have stealth on their skill list they have awareness and persuade like everybody else and uh, you you will get security now Security is the Star Wars euphemism for lockpicking. So unless you plan on bashing in every door, chest, or other thing you can't unlock, you're going to need some points in security. I'll talk more about that when we get to that part of the character creation. And treat injury is on your list as well. Uh, so you won't, you'll get more feats no not more feats you'll get the same number of feats as the consular you'll get fewer powers fewer force points but your vitality will be a little bit better and you'll get more skills and skill points to spend them on and then we get this guy the guardian the guardian is your combat. This is your big stupid fighter. If you've been playing D&D a lot and you're familiar with the Duskblade or the Psy Warrior, this is that kind of equivalent. This is your Anakin from the, the prequel trilogy, trilogy, uh, where uh, you are going to 
beat somebody with that lightsaber and make them sorry, <laughs> you will have some powers. You will have some force points, but you're only getting four force per level, but you are getting 10 vitality per level. So remember, your, your counselor is only getting six vitality per level. Your sentinel is getting eight vitality per level. And your guardian is getting 10 vitality per level. So if you want to have, if you want to get up front in melee combat and survive the experience and you don't care about force points, then the guardian is going to be your go-to. Just know that if you thought the, uh, if you thought the consular didn't have skill points as a Jedi guardian, you will get one skill point point singular. Uh, plus whatever bonus for high intelligence, which you're not likely to have if you're playing a Jedi Guardian. Uh, one <laughs> skill point plus intelligence per level. And uh, y your only class skills are going to be Demolitions, Awareness, Persuade, and Treat Injury. So if you're not trying to blow it up, persuade it, or treat the injuries from blowing it up, uh, guess what? Ain't happening. Y you're going to be... Oh yeah, that's right. To... to Put skill ranks in cross class skills, skills that are not part of your class. You got to spend two instead of one. And oh, oh, what's that you say? You only get one skill point. Well then, so th there, there's your, there's your, there's your balance. On the other hand, you're getting extra feats. You're getting some really neat, bo really neat bonus things like force jump. You're getting. Uh, unarmed specialist and you're getting uh, improvements to those skills as you level up so if you want to if you want to gather all the feats or as many of the feats as you can and you want to go ahead and beat somebody silly and survive it and laugh as you still have half hit points before they're done um the guardian is going to be the way to go. Just know that you're going to be leaning a lot more on your companions than either of the other two classes for your class skills. So that's pretty much the, the breakdown. And then once you get to the prestige classes, you're going to get into the prestige level versions of both of those. Uh, as I alluded to in, in my descriptions of these three, I like the Sentinels. All right. Sorry about the uh, abrupt cut here. This conversation went on for longer than I'd intended, and the whole episode ended up being way longer than I wanted to publish as a single video. So, I'm going to cut it here, where it makes a nice break in the conversation. We just finished talking about some of the general stuff with the game, and now we're going to get into building the character itself. So while we're on that transition, I'm just going to roll on over to the credits and we'll pick this up where we left off in episode two. So, uh, uh I'll see you then. Well, that was fun. Unless I just died. Then it was a little less than fun. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you're having fun. And if you want to watch live, you can follow along on Twitch. I live stream the recording of the next six episodes at least once a week. I might even throw in some bonus content here and there if time allows. And you'll find the link in the description below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you'll get notified when new episodes go up, live stream archives from some of my other stuff, and various and sundry other videos. Because I do more than just this. And if you want to get notifications, don't forget to hit the bell. And if you really, truly enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and all that good fun stuff. If you have any questions, queries, quips, scopes, comments, complaints, or other whatnot, don't forget to leave those in the comments down below. Lastly, if you're enjoying the show, if you're getting some value out of it, then consider giving a lot of value back. Go to live.anonjunior.com. It'll take you to the Streamlabs page where you can tip or donate, however you want to think about it. And there's no preset amount because this is a straight up value for value proposition. So if you're getting value out of the show and you would like to give a little value back, even if it's just enough for a cheap cup of coffee, then uh, consider going, giving a little bit, especially if it tickled the nostalgia or opened your eyes to a new game that you might play. And uh, with all that said and done, we're uh, 
we're going to cut out. Have fun. Enjoy. And I'll see you next time.